What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. On this episode of Coffee and Van Chats, we chat with Jake Sittler. Jake Sittler has been a part of many U.S. pro teams, but one that probably stands out is Estella's pro team from way back in the day, winning some of the biggest crits and some of the biggest races all over the country. Jake was hit while out training on his bike, which then left him questioning whether or not he'll ever come back to the sport of cycling, which then he makes his transition into the business world, working for a company like Floyd's of Leadville. Floyd's of Leadville is a CBD company based out of Leadville, Colorado, which offers all forms of CBD products, all the way from gummies to coffee to just the basic tinctures. On this episode, we chat about how CBD can affect athletes and how it has a positive effect. And we even chat about doping tests and all those crazy things that you think about when you're taking a product like CBD. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Other than that, thanks for watching. Peace. Hey guys, welcome back to Coffee and Van Chats. I'm here with Jake Sittler of Floyd's of Leadville. When I knew Jake, he was on Estella's and like, freaking smashing it so um now now he's working with floyd's of leadville and doing all the crazy cool controversial to some people cbd <laughs> stuff um but yeah jake how you doing man good man thanks cool. for having me on i appreciate yeah, yeah. it so so kind of why i wanted to bring you on as well i wanted to talk about some of the cbd stuff kind of get some yep. education for some of these people yep. but also let's just let's start with you as an athlete because you know we all know how sport works you you, you can be a great athlete for one race and then the next race, nobody knows who you yeah. are and it kind of gets crazy. So I kind of want to talk about, I kind of want to talk about your career and how you came up through the sport. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I actually ran in college cross country and track and steeplechase. Um, so I had, um, kind of done previously, you know, every kid has a bike and my dad was really into mountain biking growing up through high school and all that stuff. I dabbled in mountain bike racing, but you know, running was, at the time, you know, 2007, I don't think co collegiate cycling was really a thing. It was very club oriented. Penn State yeah. had a program um, that was yeah, really track. You can track get like a freaking full scholarship. 100%. It's insane. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you know, for me, I, my family had had a had a, um, a grocery store um, that was open. We had opened the grocery store in 1931. Oh. Um, so, so it had been around for up until that point. You know, 2007 you know, 75, 76 years. Um, so I was going to go for business and I was really considering Penn State. Was I going to go to ride bikes or did I want to go to um, Shippensburg University, which is a division two state college, um, which actually has a, a club cycling program. Um, there went the coffee. <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. It hurt. <laughs> that's awesome. Sorry, so but, guys, uh, I have a bag of coffee. If you're not, if you're not hearing it, the secrets out. But so we'll talk about that later. Go ahead. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, it was just one of these things where um, Shippensburg had this great coach called um, Steve Spence. He was uh, an Olympic marathoner. Um, he was in the Barcelona Olympics, and he was third in the World Championships. Um, I think recently someone had gotten a medal, but he was essentially our last. Olymp um, world championship medal from an American um, oh, wow. in, in, a, in a marathon distance. So there was a lot of um, cool stuff going on there at the time. I went to Shippensburg and, and ran there for four years. Um, my, my fourth year, we made it to nationals. We were seventh um, at, at cross country nationals. I have a great group of friends. Um, some of my closest friends came from, you know, just my running group there. And then I, um, my fifth year, I redshirted um, to stay a final year and, and go after track nationals and the school record in the steeplechase. And um, I was actually quite close um, with my opening race. And then yeah. um, I went out for a run and had a, essentially a, a career ending at, at that point, a collegiate career ending um, injury oh, from wow. a run. And uh, I was like, you know how it goes, man. Injuries are tough. Their yeah. college is ending. I wasn't ever going to be a professional runner but I loved exercising. I mean, you do, it's a, it's a you know, yeah. you know how it goes, man. Yeah, it's, it's I don't addiction. need to explain it to athletes. It, it becomes an addiction for sure. <laughs> right. So you're like, what am I going to do? I don't want to freaking go into the workplace yet. I wasn't ready yeah. for that. Um, so I, 
I had worked at a local bike shop in high school when I called him up and they gave me, they like, well, hooked me up on a mountain bike. And then um, I did, went to Whiteface 100K. Oh, wow. to like, I was riding like five hours a week. I didn't know what I was doing. Strava yeah, just yeah. came out, you know, the, the, the typical go hammer ever ride. For sure, for sure. Yeah, type, yeah. Type no thing. structure, then, just, yeah, yeah, just, just go for it. And then I went up to Whiteface and um, like made the breakaway with Justin Landini or something. And yeah. then was like, I was re- found really quickly. I was really good at the climbing part and like not so good at the technical stuff because I had just been not ridden a bike for six years. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, then was like, people were like, you should try road biking. And then, you know, fast forward to that. And then my first year road biking, I ended up um, starting as a cat four. And then I ended up that final all in one year, I did um, at, uh, Westchester Twilight Criterium and I was 13th at that in the pro race. Wow. in one year so i was like okay that's insane yeah 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 i was like maybe we can do this cycling thing after all yeah so um when, when did you get your first contract so 2014 then um edwin bull von dessel um i actually what we went out to salt lake city utah for um raleigh was giving away a contract whoever was the first american at um this race up in in park city okay. um and funny enough um i think um oh man i'm drawing a blank on his name geez i'm embarrassed i'm for drawing a blank but he ended up riding for raleigh for a bunch of years but i actually um ended up he had a mechanical and i ended up turning down the contract um and through going with von dessel because he had hooked me up so so much and i felt like there was just some opportunity there and and i didn't end up taking that raleigh contract And I think, you know, I don't know where my career would have went if I would have done that, but it kind of gave me more flexibility. Was it cyclocross or was it, was it road? Cyclocross. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I kind of, yeah, it was for cyclocross. Um, Yeah. So I, I I went with Von Dessel and then he kind of supported me for like a domestic elite program and with Haymarket bikes, Jared Meters down there and and Haymarket was who got um, Joe Dombrowski launched. Yeah. So I I really owe a lot to to Haymarket and kind of their, um, kind of their support that first year for sure that's a very uh, underrated team i mean i remember seeing them like when when novant health criterium was a thing and it's just like it's like a local team in the northeast right that's that's kind of pumped out some pretty good athletes but they kind of just go under the wayside and nobody knows that they come from there and they're like super humble about it they're not like (laughs) like, we've created x y and z you know it's just like yeah that's pretty cool jared news is a great guy he runs that, that shop down there and he actually won um uci race um he beat brad white at nittany cross which is like this dude is you know he laughs he's like the he got this you know i know myerson does this too but he claims he's got like the lowest ftp to ever win a uci yeah. cyclocross race That's but awesome. uh he uh he did he did do that and then um yeah so then i ended up that year was pretty fortunate to to get some great support and i ended up um winning um the, the kom jersey at bucks county classic i lapped the field with a bunch of USC guys at pro crit nationals and finished yeah. top 10 there. Um, and I podiumed air force. Um, and that actually got, um, Clay Murphy on yeah. Twitter was making fun of me for sunglasses or something. And, uh, <laughs> I, I direct messaged him and was like, yo dude, any chance you can, can give me a hookup for a contact for a Stellis? Cause he was on a Stellis at yeah. the time. And, and, uh, Clay and I are, 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 are best buddies now. And I, I really awesome. actually, Oh, getting on a protein to probably clay to yeah. just get that, you know, that little in that nudge mm-hmm. in the end. And uh, yeah. So Stellis gave me that first contract and that kind of what started it all for me. Yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, with like, I mean, cause Stellis had a solid fucking ride for like yeah. a couple of years. I mean, they were kind of like the elevate of our, that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like, actually a really, really good point. Um, we had won some pretty big races. We were a big, um, we, we did the whole, we were the last team that did the road and the crit squad. So we split it up. We tried to kind of do yeah. what UHC did. Um, I actually was the only guy, well, there was guys from time to time, but I was a big crossover guy. So I could, could still race crits, but I was on going into the 2015 season. I wasn't supposed to be, you know, quote unquote GC um, yeah. rider for Estellas, but I did kind of eventually fall into that role as our, our GC rider. Yeah. I laugh like, you know, there isn't a race in the country I couldn't finish like fifth or 15th in, but I could never, 
I just point. was yeah. never good enough, you know, I like you. I was there, but you know, GC is such a, what is that? If you're not yeah. Winning, you yeah it's an interesting term. It's like <laughs> being called the GC guy, but your GC guy is getting 20th. It's kind of like, uh, exactly. Uh, like I was like, my guy? <laughs> right. I was finishing yeah. 10th, right. Like yeah. for like, but you know, for us with a split squad, I mean, 2015, and 2016 and really even 2017 the american scene was was hot man i mean there was a lot of really big names coming you know back from europe or rally was putting a lot of money and and i guess they were you know optim at the time but there was some it was hard it was it was a hard couple years of racing yeah because i guess i guess that's the big controversy now like even and i don't know what it's going to do with just the whole covid and, and the reset with usa crits but that's been the whole controversy with you know, the split teams, like back in the day, you used to have, you know, Brad Huff, Eric yep. Young, and these yep. guys, you know, you know, um, I'm blanking on Aldo and Iman Lucas oh, it, and you guys, and they would all police Brad White, Adrian Hedgeberry, like, absolutely, man, those three teams would police the field, and it would keep it safe. And absolutely, absolutely. And, and now it is carnage. It's, chaos. it's chaos. almost like they're racing for a contract that doesn't exist like back in the yep. day you were racing for a uhc estella's yep. optum you know what have you now it's kind of like him happy there's big in crits too yeah dude well i mean i i look back at you know one of my more memorable crits air force was a ride where i usually could always come off some road fitness you know you had that that philly week you know it would be yeah. like it was i remember the one year it was like i went um i was this, this, I actually was probably one of my most memorable weeks on the bike was, um, Philly, man. I mean, I'm from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. That's, yeah. that's it, dude. Like Philly is like, that's it. it for me to say, I got to race the last Philly. It was a pretty cool photo of my dad running up the wall. My, my, that's my awesome. now wife, girlfriend at the time had a cousin who lived on the Maniunk wall. So they would throw a big party. And, um, so it was just this really, really special experience. Um, the year prior, I had crashed in the breakaway at Winston-Salem and shattered my collarbone. So I didn't get to race Philly that year or the week yeah. after. So, you know, coming in in 2015, I was like, this is going to be, this is going to be it. Um, and uh, I, I finished 20th, yeah. but that was right there for it. But um, we went from Winston-Salem, we had the UCI race, or excuse me, we had US Pro at Winston-Salem on a Saturday. Yeah. I did the crit on a Sunday. I did U.S. Pro on Monday, Philly on Sunday, and then we drove to Saginaw, and it was Jeez. all in 14 days. And then, and then I flatted out of Sag- Saginaw. Um, it was a really cold day, and they flew me down to Air Force, and then um, I ended up finishing third overall at Air Force. Um, so that was a that was a cool little stretch of races there. It's getting me yeah. all excited thinking back about yeah, this. Yeah, he's like. I'm about to make the memory. <laughs> like on this podcast. This is when Jake makes a comeback. Like, that's, yeah, that's, no. it. that's it, man. Um, but yeah, it's, well, speaking about that, you know, like we dive into like now you've retired and let's, yeah. let's talk a little bit about how you handled that. Cause like, like I said, before we even started hitting record on this podcast, like, you know, I, you always see people talking about, Oh, I'm going to retire yeah. and I'm going to quit or, you know, whatever else. And it really doesn't hit you until it crosses your brain of when do I, when do I make that crossover? Cause it's a scary crossover, right? When your entire life has just been, you know, knowing how not to make money, I guess, for the most part and how to scrounge for life. And then you have to apply that to the workforce or whatever, but the feeling of just being able to walk out your front door and go for a ride and that's your job. Absolutely, man. Something that's uncanny. And so when that happens and you realize that, Hey, now's the time that I have to do that. And it not being on your own terms, like, how did you handle that? Like, how did, well, first yeah. off, how did all that even happen? Yeah. So, well, so when the cell is folded in 2016, um, it was, I think anyone that was around at that time kind of was like, it was a pretty big market dump year. I think we went down from like 13 Conti teams to, maybe nine in 2017. I can't remember, but it was a big year where a lot of good guys were looking for jobs. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did, was able to get on CCB. Um, you know, that wasn't, we were Conti with a, a more European focus, 
um, which for me actually kind of ended up reigniting my career a little bit. Um, I, I, I got a little hunger back going to Europe and, and um, I actually finished second on a stage at Tour of Ireland, which yeah. behind Michael Storer, who ended up going to Sunweb. And, you know, there was a bunch of now world tour pros in that race. And, and I think in my mind, I was like, look, I can do this. I can yeah. race in Europe. I had a, a, a good string of races. I was, I was finishing pretty competitively and um, some 1.1s. I was in Shaw Cells in the front group with 30K to go and Whoop and Art and, and yeah. freaking his same that dropped a bottle and crashed me out of the race. There was a big pile up. And, but I was, I was confident, you know, and then I went into 2018. And it was just one of those years, man, where the fitness was there, but the luck wasn't. And um, it just, uh, I, other than I, the only real result I got that year was I, I won Sea Otter. Um, and then after that, I was out training um, in the local area in between stages and a woman ran a red light and hit me at 40 miles an hour and broke my back and almost paralyzed me. That was, that was it, man. That just, it just all came to a head. <laughs> yeah. And and I mean, like, and that was before, because you got a little one now. And that was, yes, that was before she, that. Mm -hmm. she, but was your wife pregnant at the time? No. So, no, 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 okay. So, yeah. So, we, you know, it, it was one of those things where, you, like you said, you just kind of were like, okay, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here. I'm, 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 you know, rehabilitating through this injury. And Floyd and I had been friends um through the like the lancaster thing right like just yeah. floyd was doing the cbd thing it was still pretty low-key it was controversial at the time yeah, yeah. like floyd selling drugs everyone's yeah. like haha that's that's that is, ironic that is the, <laughs> there is some irony behind it yeah for sure so you know i had seen him in leadville we hung out a little bit prior to all this and yeah he actually texted me while I was in the hospital. I don't even think I, he knew I was in the hospital. And he was just like, yo, dude, how are things going? And, uh, you know, it's just, just like, just like dude, I'm just in, the hospital, in a hospital, <laughs> actually. Things aren't great. And he was like, oh, dude, you know. And, you know, he's a guy that, that he, he wants to help people, man. I mean, yeah. he's been in a tough spot. And, and um, you know, he's lived a lot of his life in a tough spot. Um, you know, some of those circumstances being his own. I'm not going to yeah, sit here sure. and, and – and, defend the guy for you know certain decisions that he made but well i bet he would know, even say that though too i mean we, we've all made shitty decisions so 100 percent, 100 percent. and he um he just kind of was like you know gave me a little bit of a lifeline told me that after this he, he told me he was gonna start a professional team and he wanted to provide me that opportunity to to come to come back on my own terms and at this point you know i am I had my business degree and I'm yeah. also like, okay, cycling, man, I want to come back. I want to race again. These are all things, but there is that fear, dude. I mean, you got hit by a car. I wanted to start a family. It's like, can, can I look my wife and child in the eye again? If, if, if there's another accident, I mean, the roads aren't getting safer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I that's mean, the scariest part about yours. Like there's so many people that have had in, people that have had life ending. Um, yes injuries just in a bike race yeah like yours was just in between races out on a normal day that could have happened at any time it, it wasn't like the odds yep. of you being at a bike race it's like you could go home and start training on the road again and that's that's where the accident 100 percent. you know what i mean 100 percent. right yeah. i mean you hate to start to, to hate to even say stuff like this but st statistical odds of riding twelve thousand miles on a road you know fifteen thousand miles on a road a year um yeah. you know you're put around people that are going to make mistakes and, yeah. and, 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 and that likelihood is, I mean, look, let's be honest. That's why the gravel scene is coming so huge. And that's mm -hmm. why more and more people are shifting towards off-road riding is just this, this fear of, 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 and our infrastructure of, and you just start to know more and more people that have had accidents and, yeah, and, I mean, and, and had run-ins. And I've said it on this podcast before, but even myself, like I got hit by a car two months out of nationals, uh, just, literally a dude was passing the bike lane and decided to turn right as I oh. was bending a hill and my face smacked his oh, mirror so I knocked out like seven teeth had no other scratches no other scratches just just my teeth like straight teeth out 
Um, that's why I got the preacher smile now. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's insane to think about. And it was like two miles away from the house. Yep. Yep. And that's, and that's usually how it plays out. So, so you had this accident, you, you, you know, you got hit by a car and now you've talked mm -hmm. to Floyd's because you were on Floyd's, Floyd's cycling uh, mm -hmm. team. And that was ran Correct. by, that was ran by yes. Gore Silver Management. So that would have been Gord and Gord Scott Frazier. McFarlane was the, the manager of the team. And yeah. look, dude, that team was fire, man. That, I mean, was. that was, it that was. team was like, like in my mind, you know, I had the opportunity to be on, you could call it a rally. I mean, it was a good yeah. team. I mean, they, yeah. they were going to do big races. They were, they were going to get big invites. They had Travis McCabe. I mean, they had. Yeah, well, it was essentially the UHC that didn't get signed to rally right. or like didn't have the, the rally, didn't have the budget. That's where it went. 100%. Yeah. Um, but at this point, you know, I'm getting out on roads and it's just, it's, you know, I'm having problems with my, my back and my legs and it's mm. just, it's, you know, it, it gets, it gets to you and, and you just think to yourself, like, is this going to be worth it to me? Or do I, you know, not risk it anymore? Do I kind of do what's right for my career and, and make that hard decision? You know, even if I still love cycling and want to pursue it, I just had to make the right decision. I felt like for my family yeah. um, and, and, and look, I mean, the hemp cannabis industry is a, a young guy, man. It's the time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. How many, how many guys back in high school were like, when weed's legalized, I'm going to, I'm going to be a part of it. And it's like, yeah, yeah good luck, buddy. Exactly. Yeah, Especially like all my friends who are like, man, I want to move out to Colorado and, and that's what I want to do. And it's like, cool that you might as well just open a coffee shop while you're at it. Like it's, 100%, it's, such, a, dude. it's such a saturated market. It is. It is a saturated market. And not, and speaking of that, I also opened a coffee shop. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so that's actually how it kind of, you know, the transition was, yeah. right? Like Floyd and like and Floyd's of Leadville was a very Leadville, Colorado base. We had our soft gels. We had our tinctures. We had our online business. Um, and, you know, I had retail experience with my family um, in the grocery business and had some yeah. ideas and kind of started pitching them to Floyd about let's move to Lancaster, man. We've got the Amish here. We've got the best farming and agriculture and soil in the country. As far as I'm concerned, how old are I know you at the, this time, by the way? I'm 30. I'm 29 at the time. No, yeah. 29 yeah, at the time. When you're pitching the all time. these ideas. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, and CBD coffee, man, that's going to be huge. And I'm like, yeah. and let's do, and I had, I'm just kind of pitching ideas and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he let me do them, dude. I mean, I got to give them awesome. to the guy. He listened and, we ended up um, growing with 55 farmers. We opened up an extraction facility. It's about two minutes from my house. Floyd's there right now um, running it. Um, we opened up a CBD cafe in downtown Lancaster City where we sell our products and, and do the coffee. Um, and uh, we ended up, um, I kind of attacked large retail. So did like sheets and we're in Circle K's and we're in all the speedways. And right. um, yeah, it's been a very... Um, you know how cycling stressful this is uh it's this is so worse stressful. yeah well that's the thing it's like the difference between cycling and what you're doing now it's like you can hang up the bike and move on whereas yeah. like you actually have like people's money and it's like it's yes. like you're playing real life monopoly you are in a way correct yeah correct and, and so like you pitch an idea to this guy and floyd's had his own troubles man i mean he took I mean, it, there's an article out that straight up says that he took the whistleblower money and put it into the team. That's how that team yes. got started. So Correct. Like, yep. It's not like Floyd has all this money he can just throw around, I'm assuming. So no. when you go, hey, man, let's do a coffee shop. And he's like, all right, here we go. That's his money, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we did some capital raising in the area and stuff, too. And I had that's awesome. kind of what allowed me to kind of come in, you know, as, at a partnership level, per se. But awesome. we, we, we did that. And, and also, you know, it's, it's a constant game of a, a, a growth of a company. I mean, yeah. you know, companies grow in different ways. And, and you know, you've got to figure out the, the fastest direction. And the hemp space is so wild west. I mean, people say it's wild west, but it really is. There aren't rules. Um, we're very fortunate to, to have gotten a, a little, not a little, but I would say quite a large niche in the cycling industry. And that's been the backbone of this company has been our endurance sports base. Um, yeah. 
you know, it's a testament to the fact that this group of people that I've worked in Floyd's, we have kind of created a great product line that people like, and we were very fortunate that that is the case. Um, but the unknown side of things is, is taking a, a brand that is Floyd's of Leadville that can be successful in the bike industry to a brand that can be, I hate to say it, but you, you can be a Red Bull or a Cliff Bar if the, if sure. the cards if the cards lay right. I mean, that's Why the goal of everything. Why would you hate to say that? I feel like that would be freaking Well, awesome, you, you know? don't want to be. You don't want to be a sellout? Cool. Yeah, yeah. No, for no, sure. no. I would love to be that. I just hate to say, you don't want to put <laughs> yeah. the cart before the horse, right? I get you. I get you. Yeah. Um, but that's the goal. I mean, the goal yeah. is to be a household name for CBD because, frankly, it's not just athletes that benefit from it. I think athletes are starting to see the real benefits of it this past year. Um, yeah, well, let's... I, I, Let's kind of chat about that a little bit, like um, in the sense of like, you know, everybody's worried about testing positive yeah. and like, yeah. that's the biggest thing, but I Let's really want some of that. <laughs> I literally want to clear this up on this podcast because like yep. I'm in the testing pool. Okay. 100%. And, or I have been in the testing pool and the amount of THC that you yes. have to consume, consume. Yep. you would almost have to be high on the Correct. line. 150 nanograms a milliliter is, is the, yeah. is the hour liter or whatever it is, is, is the, the exactly what you're saying. That is the testing protocol. So with that said, full spectrum cannabis oil from CBD hemp plant has trace amounts of THC. There is a THC free product line. You've got that coffee right there. That is CBD only isolate. There's no THC in that product. If it's white, yeah. if it's a black labeled Floyd's product, there is THC in it. Now, how do you get THC into your system? Obviously, it's in two ways. THCA yep. is a cannabinoid that converts to THC upon consumption within your system. There's THCA in that product, in a full spectrum product, and there's THC. Trace amounts, but it does store in the fat cell as you take it over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So if you took any sort of full spectrum CBD product over a long period of time, it will build up in your bloodstream. I would say be very, very careful if you are a federal employee. There's a good chance that you you will fail a federal drug test after because that's like zero. That's like, like zero 15. tolerance. Okay, it's like 15. 15. It's like what okay. WADA used to be like when like snowboarders were tested positive because they didn't smoke weed yeah. four weeks before the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it actually, the house that I'm in, there. the house that I'm in, used to um, wrestlers used to live here, and they tested positive like two years before the uh, the USADA switched their, you know, because it was like a, it was 50, I think, or 15 or it was yeah, something it really was small. Yeah, it was yeah, really, 15, really low. I think it was what it was. Um, yeah, and so I got this house because they had to move home because oh, they no. were no longer <laughs> on the team. <laughs> Which is crazy now, right? Like that's yeah. an, ins you know, yeah. I, I have different thoughts about that, but, For but sure. you know, they, 150 is extremely high and I, I there's been some high level Very athletes high. That, have, that have blamed it on cbd products which is my BS. theory would probably be that you're probably using a thc cream that is during the race that has cbd in it yes. for you know whatever reason that you're using that for let's yeah. whatever you know and that's what's causing a, an actual drug positive When's the last time that somebody has tested positive though for marijuana? Last uh, there was like, an, uh, an a last triathlete year? last year that oh, that, okay. that tested positive for marijuana and okay. and it was it was on faulty CBD. Now oh, here's the gosh. thing. Here's the thing. Is there is there a possibility that a, a certain CBD company would have not tested their products properly and that could happen i mean anything can happen yeah quality control is always an issue in the cannabis space at this point because there's just no real regulations um could that have happened sure is it likely no no yeah i just don't because like even if it's a questionable company because like isn't it even if you do full spectrum, it can't be above 0.3 percent it can't then, be it could it could yeah. theoretically happen yeah. If yeah. it's not being produced properly, um, yeah. there's a lot of things that could happen. I mean, you know, it, it, you're in Colorado, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. big thing going on right now with cannabis companies that, oh, well, we took this bud off the off the shelf and they were claiming it had 19% THC and 10% CBD and we tested it and it had 12% THC and 8% CBD. It's like, okay, well, let's understand how lab testing works of cannabis. 
they're not going to freaking take every single bud of marijuana yeah. and send it to a lab. They're going to take a batch that they yeah. grew in very similar conditions, send that off and test it over a few buds and kind of come up with what they think is a, an appropriate amount. But you're selling marijuana. They know there's THC in it. Like that quality control has to be there to an extent, but yeah. it doesn't. So I think there's some lawsuits happening with that. But they're like just a, eventually like I'm just not getting happen. stoned enough. Yeah, like, exactly. That, like, Smoke some like, more. <laughs> the THC wasn't good enough. Like I, because I, I see this. I see this argument, and I see this. You know, I've always used CBD, and yeah. you know whether that's you know Floyd's. I've even used before. I knew you guys. I was using you know just some local stuff down the road. Yep. Yep. Um, and I've never, ever, ever had an issue. And I've also been stoned. And I'll say that on this podcast. Yeah, like, of course. I've never been stoned by, by taking CBD. A CBD product. Yeah, it just doesn't. Right. Well, one doesn't thing work. people don't understand is CBD actually, they call it, you know, not the anti-high, but CBD is a cannabinoid that actually regulates um, the receptors in your body. When you take too much THC, it can actually bring you down from the paranoia mm. because it does kind of regulate and offset a little bit of those psychoactive effects that the THC provides. Yeah. Um, so when you have a high dose CBD product with trace amounts of THC, generally when people say they get that very well being feeling, it's actually coming from the small amount of THC, but the right, you know, that full dose of CBD. Okay. Um, so that's why most people push full spectrum products, um, for, for general well being. obviously isolate has its place for healthcare workers, federal employees, anyone mm-hmm. that just literally can't have THC in their system. Um, and, and products work great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, that's kind of why but, people do that. Yeah. And even, even to kind of clear this up, it's just like at the end of the day, you know, if you are in military, if you are, yep. you know, yeah, yep. federal employee, like yep. maybe it's just not the best supplement for you. And yeah, and, yeah, look, and, absolutely. Really if you don't want to risk it, especially if you're like in the military, I get it. I, you know, I think that the military would have a great use for isolate CBD products. I think, you know, there, we could go into stories about people with PTSD. We can go into stories about pain relieving properties. We can go into stories about all sorts of things that CBD have incredible benefits for THC free. The military is not going to be able to test for the cannabinoid CBD. They're not doing that. They're, when, when people are doing a, a test, they're screening for marijuana. They're, they're yeah. screening for that metabolite. Um, so um, this isn't me sitting here saying, hey, if you're in the military, take THC free CBD, but you're probably safe. <laughs> yeah yeah it's well and that's that's the thing like i think i think it's even endorsed in some ways um yeah. like hey you should take this like it is good it is this and it is that but just know that like you can't use that as an excuse correct test positive like it's it's you know correct you have to be an adult about it and so um yeah i can de- totally understand how it's kind of that thing where it's like oh question mark of whether or not we should do that but look we always got to be important what we put in our body is on us that's the yeah. big cycling mantra right like it's well, like see, you and that's, that's what i think is funny it's like you have the same guy who's like well there's no point in taking cbd because it's not worth the risk but yet you you put bang you know explosion x ex, you know pre-workout in your hundred percent that you bought at walmart because it has caffeine beta alanine and hundred percent like, oh. but and you don't care about that but the fact that you know, this is like, oh, I might test positive. And then that conversation comes up of like, well, I didn't test positive for taking bang, explosion, whatever. And it's like, well, yeah, that's the thing, man. It's like, you have a better chance of probably testing positive and something like from that something like that or you with CBD, in my opinion. Oh, hundred percent. And look, it's going to take time and, and, you know, can of therapy and athletes is a thing. And it's huge in UFC. It's, it's, why I can see it's banned is, is I can, I, I, I'll give you a few reasons. It recovers you like crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Like, I mean, people are probably listening to this and be like, yes, it does for sure. Yeah. And then there's other people like, man, I'm definitely giving this guy a thumbs down. Like, yeah. Because like, and, and that's kind of one thing I want to clear up. It's like, it's just like, I'm so tired of, of seeing like, well, aren't you going to test positive if you do X? And it's like, look, I can't tell you whether or not you're going to test positive. I don't think you're a scientist. I'm not a scientist, but I've done my research. I've, you know, I've been tested. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I don't see the issue and I don't see, um, now, obviously, if you start feeling woozy, if you start feeling like you're checking in and out, your eyes get bloodshot. 100%. You might have just taken the wrong supplement. I've, I've heard crazy stories of, you know, like being like, yeah, I thought I bought CBD gummies and I actually bought one-to-ones, you know, 10 milligrams. Yeah, well, then you're, yeah, exactly. And, and then 10 you're milligrams CBD. 100%. You are going to get stoned. That's yeah. going to happen. Um, so you got to be I, I, careful. I, I, we all know that, but we all know that the cycling industry has, you know, no one wants to admit it. No one talks about it, but we all know that cycling industry has a sleep medication problem too. Yep. You know, what is the worst thing that happens if you get the jitters before race, you can't freaking sleep. People chug z yep. they'll take Ambien's, they'll take whatever to calm down for flights. I mean, we've seen issues where athletes have taken something to calm them down and then they get drug tests for that. We've, I mean, within the recent years, we've seen somebody test positive. I mean, correct. you know, trying to take painkillers to go to sleep and it's exactly like a question mark. so let's you know from my standpoint i'm 100 percent going to take a full spectrum or thc free to even be safe cbd supplement the night before a race to calm down yeah. or at least get a restful night's sleep and feel confident that it's better than chugging half a bottle of z pill z for sure yeah or night quill or whatever i mean i mean like that stuff can't be long-term healthy for you not at all. Like, I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like if I did a video where I'm like, you know, I have to take one to go to sleep or help me go to sleep. My anxiety yeah. is high. So I can either chug this bottle and I, I mean, that's, that's essentially like, you know, rap culture in a way, right? Yeah. Like, isn't like taking NyQuil, like it's like the purple drink, right? I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I recommend that. But speaking of the purple drink, I mean, I don't want to compare it to that, but I see that you guys have tonics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is that? just is a recovery it, tonic it, it's is it's it like bubbly water coast. no no it's kind of like you don't want to call it a five-hour energy it's a very similar five-hour energy yeah type I see bottle. That it's small yeah it's really just it's the glucose that helps absorb it and kind of just general well-being you know pe- we call it our anti-hangover shot you know people oh, that's that, awesome. that next day hangover yeah, want yeah. to get that stuff in your system it's got some good stuff in it i yeah. i'm not like you know i like the tonics don't get me wrong, but I, the tonic isn't like my go-to CBD supplement. It's kind What's of more your go-to? And go. My go-to really, to be honest with you for CBD is I love the soft gels or okay. the tinctures. Um, it's the, really the most basic form. It's essentially just hemp seed oil and the distillate um, mm-hmm. put into it. That helps me the most, you know, in terms of the pain relief. And then um, for my back, I use um, our 600 milligram lavender balm. Mm-hmm. Um, it has some lidocaine in it get out of the hot shower and rub that on my back when it's acting up. That's awesome. And it, it really, really works well, man. Um, so, you know, with with the soft gels and the tinctures, if you're, if you're recommending it to someone, mm -hmm. um, would you like, which one would be better? uh, Yeah. Yeah. So just based on flavor. Well, tincture, no. So tincture is, yeah, is, is in hemp seed oil. So what happens is you drop it under your tongue. So people, if you have a gag reflex, you don't like the taste of marijuana. It's not marijuana, but it tastes very earthy, hempy, yeah. you know, it tastes like whatever. Um, but it's very medicinal and it works mm-hmm. very quickly because what they call it bioavailability. So what that means is it essentially doesn't necessarily get as much digested into your stomach. You kind of get a little more into your bloodstream. So that's why people prefer tincture. Whereas if you'd rather kind of just pre-dose, um, and not worry about how much you're taking people will just grab a soft gel boom pop it think okay. about forget about it and then within an hour hour and a half they get that effect okay cool man um but the coffee man you start the day with the cbd coffee yeah you know yeah they, it's kind of nice it's like it's you know you because my issue is is like so i love the gems that you guys have yeah like, yep the gems the gummies it's yeah. like it's like eating candy um yes. but also recovery and they work it's, yeah. And they work. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, I do it like kind of right before bed, you know, you always get like a sweet, yep. so you just take one of those right before bed. And it's we like, have something exciting coming out about that. We'll just give a little, Oh, little, all uh, right. I won't get too far into detail, but coming oh, soon. All right. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So like, I love, I love that. And, um, but the coffee, it's like, you don't get the drowsy effect, but at the same Correct. time you get that you get that good feeling of like non soreness. I mean, many athletes that are probably listening to this podcast, it's like when you train and you're training for a sense of fitness gain, you have to be under a sense of fatigue. hundred percent all the time. So all you're the like, time. you're not like super sore, but you're not super alert. And like to yep. touch it, it's kind of tender. 
but like I can, my favorite thing to do is honestly have a cup of this coffee and in about an hour do a foam roll. Cause yeah, like I can nice, actually man. handle the pressure um, yeah. a little bit easier. It's not a huge dose. It's 500 milligrams in a bag. So per cup, yeah. you get like 15 milligrams. When I was going for it, it actually took me a long time. We worked with this roaster up in Granby, Colorado. So Google that. It's about two and a half hours away yeah, from Lionhead, Ledger. right? Lionhead. Yeah, he's a great yeah. dude. Very good coffee. It's, it's, I'm a big coffee guy. You know, yeah. I think coffee shops, not calling out any coffee shops here, but they, they do the fruit notes so high and it's yeah. like, and they love that. And it's like, you know, here's the pear and the orange. And I'm like, yeah. I get it. I get what you're doing, but that's, I just like good tasting, well-bodied coffee. Like yeah. that's just what I wanted to do. We don't need to yeah. go crazy with it. It doesn't need to be super sour or acidic or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so you're um, more of a, you're more of a, like a dark roasted guy kind of, yeah, kind of thing. Like, cause like when that, cause that's big out here too. It's, um, you know, like switchback who sponsors this yep. podcast. They, they do very, very light roasted coffees to yep. the medium roast because that's what brings out the flavor for them. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, people, that's what they like. And, and I get, you know, the Starbucks dark roast, I hate saying it's Starbucks, but it's a crush and it's just Charbucks and it's like just massive bitter it's notes heavy, yeah. and, and it's just super heavy. This is, and that what you would call it a medium body, but it is a darker roast. Um, but the CBD, like you said, you know, the, the goal was to just kind of get, Coffee is anti-inflammatory in itself um, and antioxidant. So when you combine the CBD and the anti-inflammatory property of it, um, you're going to get, I think a lot of people don't get that like anxiety from if you over drink caffeine, you get that like, you kind of like, you feel focused, like you said, you feel energized. You're not going to get the drowsy effect, but you do just kind of feel that like, Oh, this is nice. Like I feel, I feel I, I drank a cup of coffee, but I'm not getting that over on the, the edge type feeling. The yeah. Cooking it kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, cushion coffee, man. That's what people, that's Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome, man. So, so what's like, what's going on now? Like, you know, like with Floyd's, like, I mean, cause mm-hmm. I, they were probably like one of the first cbd companies i guess within the cycling market um yeah. or at least that, yep. that was well known i mean I, cbd's yep. kind of always been a thing a lot of people of have been pushing for it uh, but now with the new education like floyd's i mean they they were like one of the first people to do it and yes it was funny it was ironic when we all heard about it on bellow mm-hmm. news and whatever else that you know floyd is coming in and he's essentially selling drugs and we're right. like, well, that's kind of funny because it was still so taboo. But honestly, he seemed he was smart because now he's like the first one into the market. So I see that you guys have tons of more products yeah, than before. Huge. Um, I, I, I make the joke that we have the most amount of SKUs of any CBD company in the entire world. You have to, Because like most <laughs> CBD companies, like you guys got a hydration mix. Yeah. Like, like most CBD companies, it's like soft gels and they have like a relaxing one and yeah. then like a, a, a sleep one. And then they, they have the same product, but in the tincture form. Well, with classic cycling mentality, nothing works better than excess. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I guess more and so, more. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, we, it's all about finding what people like. And sometimes you get some wins, sometimes you get some losses. But what we want to do is take CBD and we want to make it destigmatized, right? So yeah. like a tincture and a soft gel to some people feels what it is. It feels like medicine. Um, it feels like um, it's edgy, right? Yep. You take a gummy that what you're like, how's that edgy? It's not, it's a gummy, right? Yeah. How's taking a recovery shot, a tonic edgy? It's not. How's, um, you know, our protein, you know, our goal there is you get BCAAs, protein and CD. It's like a freaking recovery cocktail of all three things that we, we like to use to recover as athletes. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of our goal, right? Is let's come up with products based for athletes but also a line of stuff that doesn't just have to be for athletes that taste good and other people can get into and not feel threatened by just maybe popping a soft gel yeah and so not to not to kind of like you know because i don't want to keep you all morning but i see that you guys have a a giveaway or like this thing where i can essentially just add it to my cart yeah uh, and it's like 10 bucks 
um, or is it, it's free? At no, it's out. free. It's a $10 value. It's, it's just free. Yeah. We, so the reason we did that is because we are not at any events, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do at events. We want to give people CBD. We want to hook you guys up. We want to help our customers out. We want to talk to them and we're all sitting at home. Like, well, we had all this event inventory that yeah. was supposed to be at bike races <laughs> and awesome. now there's none. <laughs> so literally if I was listening to this podcast, I could literally just go to Floyd's of Leadville.com, go to shop and I, I literally just did it. I good, goody giveaways and yeah. specials under shop and I can pick one of these packs, add it to my cart and then bam, all I have to do is pay shipping. Yep. And it's, or if I door. think if it's above a certain amount, you get it for free. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's insane. So if you, yeah. So if you buy other products and you just get those getting good giveaways for free and we do the same thing at the cafe, it's about getting it into people's hands and just trying it, man. It's just destigmatizing what this is going to do. I mean, my sister is a physician assistant, both of them actually, and I have mm-hmm. no doubt in the next five years that there, and it's already happening in Colorado, mm-hmm. that doctors will be prescribing CBD. Yeah. Well, for pain. this is awesome, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that you came on. And like I said, dude, you know, I used to look up to you while you race. I still look oh, up man. to you. I think it's super cool that <laughs> you're doing what you're doing. And so uh, keep at it. And yeah, guys, if you are in, is it Lancaster PA, right? Yep, like Lancaster, in, and you said it right, dude. Yeah, oh, awesome. <laughs> That's huge. Lancaster is what everyone says, but well, if you so say I'm Lancaster, from, you're in the. <laughs> I'm from South Carolina, and there's a Chester and there's a Lancaster, and that's always yes. the argument of Lancaster or Lancaster. Um, so it's Lancaster in England, it's Lancaster in Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so cool, man. Well, if you guys are in the area, I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description below. You guys can go check out the coffee shop. If you guys are in Leadville, I'll leave a link down in the description below. I don't know if they do any crazy cool tours, but that's where they're going to be located. Uh, but yeah, there will also be a link in the description below for how you get your goodie giveaway. Um, just go check that out. And yeah, it's free. It's literally like I have it. I'm looking at it right now. It's five bucks to get it shipped to my front door. And if you decide to buy more products, you'll just get a free uh, free shipping and uh, a little goodie giveaway. So cool, Jake. I appreciate it so much. Um, hey, thanks, man. It's great so, talking to you. All right, guys, take it easy. Bye.